Did you know, besides from the RSP, tax-free saving or the RESP, there's another saving plan that is registered with the CRA, meaning that the investment in there will be tax sheltered and can even be tax-free if done right. And more importantly, the Canadian government will contribute 300% to this saving plan for the first $500 you put in, and another 200% bonus on the next $1,000. So for today's video, I want to talk about the Registered Disability Savings Plan, known as the RDSP. I will include who is eligible for this account, how do you qualify the 300% bonus, the limitation, and the rollover, and what happens at death. But before we start, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping by. This is Thomas, here to help Canadians make better choices on retirement, wealth, and insurance. My goal is to make sure you take one or two ideas home and start making better financial decisions today. So if you find this video valuable, please consider subscribing so you will never miss any of my videos. Let's get started. Again, this saving tool I'm talking about is the RDSP, short for Registered Disability Savings Plan, and it's similar to the RESP, Registered Education Savings Plan, which I've talked about in the previous videos. The RDSP is created those living with a disability to help save for financial security as they grow old, and the plan makes it easier to save as it is a tax-deferred account. First, let's cover who will be eligible for the RDSP. You will need a valid social insurance number and being a resident in Canada, and the beneficiary needs to be under the age of 60. More importantly, as the name suggested, you must first be eligible for the disability tax credit. The Canada.ca website has a list of requirements to determine if you're eligible for the disability. For instance, you're restricted in at least one of the basic activities of daily living or need life-sustaining therapy. This must also be certified by a medical practitioner as well. Again, please visit the Canada.ca website for the full list of requirements on eligibility. So why LDSP is so powerful? Similar to the RESP, the government will contribute to this plan as well. If everything is done correctly, you can get up to $90,000 of free money from the government to this plan. This is very powerful, especially to the low-income family. And let me break it down for you. First, we have the grants. We can receive up to $3,500 per year up to a maximum of $70,000. There's no grants after the age of 49, and it depends on the net quote-unquote family income. Now, why I highlighted the word family? Because it depends on the child's age if he or she is the one with disability. Once they turn 19, even if they live with the parents, the family income is based on the children, not on the parents. So if you and your spouse are high income earners, you may not want to set up the LDSP yet until your child reaches 19 years old. Why does it matter then? Because how you receive the grants will be different depends on the family income. And here's the magic number. If the family net income is below $97,069 on the first $500 contribution, every dollar that you contributed, the government will match it $3 up to $1,500 a year. And on the next $1,000 contribution, $2 grant for every dollar that you contributed up to $2,000 a year. For example, Tom is 19 years old and he has no income. His parents can contribute $1,500 and receive $3,500 bonus from the government. But if your family net income is more than $97,069, then on the first $1,000 contribution, $1 grant for every dollar you contributed, up to $1,000 a year, meaning that it's a one-to-one -one matching from the government and that's like 100% return already. Keep in mind that for our ESP, it's a 20% matching up to $500 per year. Next, if your family income is lower than a certain threshold, then the government will contribute another bonus called the Canada Disability Savings Bonds. In 2020, you get partial of the $1,000 per year if your income is lower than $48,000. And we get the full $1,000 per year if your income is lower than $31,711. The Canada Disability Savings Bonds will cap at $20,000 and will pay until the beneficiary turns 49. And you can also carry forward the unused grants and bonds, but for simplicity, I'll leave it here. In addition, there's no annual contribution limit, but there's a lifetime limit of $200,000. 
Even though you cannot lower your taxable income when you contribute to your RDSP, but all the money in there is tax shelter. And unlike RRSP, when you withdraw the money, the principal money that you put in is not taxable. For example, if you do put the max $200,000 in there, you can withdraw $200,000 later tax free. Only the gains and the bonus are taxable upon withdrawal, and depends how much you withdraw, it can be tax free, similar to the RESP in this case. Now we go through the exciting part. Next, I'm going to talk about who can open up a RDSP account then. Can anyone open up a RDSP for someone with a disability? Well, there are a few factors. If the beneficiary is under the age of majority, then a qualifying person like a legal parent, guardian, tutor, or public department can open up an LDSP and become a holder for the beneficiary. The age of the majority varies from province to province, so be sure to check what year that is and where do you live. If the parents already had an LDSP plan for them before they become adults, then the child can be added to the new plans opened by the beneficiary and become joint holders. There are some other rules, so be sure to always check the government website for the most up-to-date rules and eligibility. Speaking of being a holder, a common question is can the holder of an LDSP be changed? And here are a few scenarios. If the plan was opened by the legal parents, then the beneficiary can be added as a joint holder to the plan. If the plan was opened by a legally authorized person other than the parents, then that person must be removed from the plan and the beneficiary will be the new plan holder when they are of age. You can also make transfers from one LDSP to another LDSP, but there are some rules. First, the transfer can be made directly from one LDSP plan to another LDSP for the same beneficiary and this transfer will not count towards the $200,000 limit. The transfer itself can only be made if all the holders agree to it and all the funds must be transferred and the other LDSP must be terminated immediately after the transfer. The LDSP has a feature called rollover, where there can be a tax deferred transfer from a parent's or grandparent's registered plan to the LDSP, which reduce the amount of tax paid by the estate. Accounts like RSP, RIF, or Lira, once the owner passes away, in theory, everything will be withdrawn and considered the last year income. But by doing the rollover to the LDSP, it helps with the tax problem. So let me give you an example of how this will work. Mary is the grandparents to Tom who has a disability. Mary has $500,000 in her RIF and passed away at the age of 80. Then she has a rollover to Tom's LDSP of $200,000, which means that the only $300,000 of her RIF is taxable now. If Mary did not set up a rollover of her half a million dollars in RIF, then the full amount would have been taxed to her estate, which would be $250,000 of taxes. Now, by having $300,000 left in the RIF, her tax is now reduced to $150,000. Tom, however, will have to pay tax on his LDSP income at his own tax rates when he withdraws the amount. Now, there are rules to this rollover. The maximum amount to rollover into the LDSP is $200,000 and can only be from a parent or grandparent. Now, a rollover for the LESP is a bit different as it will mean a parent was saving for an LESP but a child has a disability that prevents them from going to the post-secondary. At that point, the cumulative income payment or the AIP can be rolled over from the LESP into the LDSP and this rover is also tax deferred but will also count towards the 200000 limit for the LDSP. I will make another video about this in the future. Now let's talk about what happens if the beneficiary of the LDSP passes away. The LDSP must be closed and the amount in the LDSP will be paid out to the beneficiary estate. There's a timeline to do this though. It must be completed by December 31st of the following calendar year when the beneficiary passes away. I know LDSP is not something that we talk about a lot because caring for someone with the disability is overwhelming and challenging enough. But by knowing this will give you a peace of mind when it comes to saving for the financial future of a loved one. So what I want you to do is please share this video to your friends or family members who have a disability. They might know about such thing but not in such details. There are still quite a bit of stuff that I want to go over. For example, not a lot of financial institutions provide LDSP service. Which company should we go for then? 
If this is something that you're interested, please leave them in the comments below. Alright, thanks so much for watching. This is Thomas, and I will see you in the next video.